Here is a world of communication, bringing together all people in a new era of understanding. Bloggen, liebe Zuschauer daheim an den Empfangsgeräten oder von wo auch immer Sie uns gerade zusehen, Bloggen ist hierzulande ein wunderhübsches kleines Hobby. Man kann dem Rest der Welt seine Katzenbilder zeigen, den Unmut über politische Vorgänge artikulieren oder einfach nur endlos vor sich hinschimpfen. Anderswo auf diesem unserem kleinen Planeten erfüllen Blogs noch gänzlich andere Funktionen, denn dort, wo es keine freie Presse gibt, sind sie oft die einzige Möglichkeit, sich zu informieren oder die Meinung zu äußern. Im Iran beispielsweise sollen mittlerweile mehrere hunderttausend Blogs aktiv sein. Mitverantwortlich für diesen persischen Blogboom ist zweifellos Hossein Derakshan und den habe ich neulich getroffen. Uh, I left Iran in 2000, in December 2000, after being a journalist. Uh, the Our newspaper was shut down, but what, that was not necessarily the reason I left Iran, because I was not doing anything political to be worried about. But it was a um, coincidence that I felt that I could, you know, I should leave now, it's a good time. So uh, I went to Canada, I immigrated to Canada, and then after a few months I discovered what the weblogs were, and I found them very interesting and something that I've always wanted to do and I actually were kind of doing in, in newspaper when I was writing a daily column on on digital culture and internet to introduce it to Iranians. So I started my blog, then after a few weeks I got so many questions and so many requests for uh, other people to helping to help other people to, ha to make their blogs that I decided to, to um, write an instruction For, on how you could make your own blog in Persian language. And I used blogger.com for that reason. It wasn't uh, acquired by Google uh, by that time. So then everything started from there because lots of people suddenly, shown, sh showed, um, suddenly showed great interest in blogging and then the movement kind of began from there. And now we have, began from there, and now we have, we've got about hundreds of thousands of blogs in Persian language. Blogging talks about a, a very self, much more self-expressive and tolerant generation that has emerged out after the revolution, the Islamic revolution. This generation is, is open to talk about what they think about, unlike, um, unlike their parents, and they are open to be criticized and, you know, come and get comments and constantly challenged and those things those things that, that I think are very important. So it's more of a cultural kind of mm, movement or cultural change rather than a merely political. But it has lots of political aspects to it. And in countries like Iran, in which the governments are kind of controlling as much possible of your life, uh, it's very difficult to not to become, not to be politicized, because when even the, when you're talking about your personal life, alcohol, for example, or parties, music, that kind of stuff, where even when you're talking about these topics, it's considered political because you are challenging, you are challenging the status quo's dominance uh, on your life. Religion is one of the justifications and excuses for them to censor lots of websites, including some some not very provocative ones such as YouTube or Orkut or Flickr, they have, I think they have an idea that by doing this they would be a enabling the young people to communicate and breaking some of the religious codes and do un-Islamic things using them or for, for example in the in case of YouTube which is probably filter, we're not really sure about that because this is quite recent um, because they, it have It has enabled Iranian youth to see some sort of erotic uh, videos. The, the interesting about blogs in Iran is that it's not seen by the government or by the people, the, ad, the average ordinary Iranians who are religious, pro-government and all that kind of stuff. Uh, blogs are not seen as a threat. Blogs are localized. Uh, you've got blogs who are totally religious and pro-government You've got clergy students, they are now teaching courses in clergy schools. 
on how the young cleric students with, with that specific clothes, they could start blogging. So you have, you've got this kind of interest from that totally different part of the society, and you've got you know, art students, trendy westernized people in North Tehran who are also into it. So that's why the blog, the blogging, the idea of blogging, or this, this new tool or technology or medium or whatever you, could, you want to call it, it's guaranteed to exist. Its existence is guaranteed because it's not seen by, by the government or by the people as a Western thing anymore. It's not a Western phenomenon anymore. It's Iranianized. It's localized. And that's fantastic about it because lots of other media when, uh, didn't become like this. For example, satellite TVs. From the beginning, they started with lots of things that they kind of isolated or, uh, f or, m or angered the religious people. And this hasn't happened in blogs. And that's why everyone belongs, feels an equal kind of um, belonging or e equal tie with the idea of blogs. Everyone wants to use it for their own purposes. There are not many blogs that are filtered out of this huge number of blogs, which includes also obviously inactive blogs in Persian language. Only a few of them, less than a you know, small, tiny fraction of them are filtered, unlike what uh, everyone is saying, or the way Iran is portrayed these days, by the media especially. And many of the people who are said to be arrested because of their blogs, because they constantly, you constantly hear that they say that 20 people are arrested because of their blogs, blogging is such a um, provocative, outrageous thing that if you did it you would be in jail and that kind of stuff. But it's not true. Lots of people are talking about politics and culture and society and they're not going through any kind of problem. Some people were arrested for other reasons, but they also happen to have blogs. But the way the Western media, especially the Anglo-Saxon media, is portraying it is that they were arrested because they had blogs. While their blogs ha didn't have more than 30, 40 page views every day. The whole movement has emerged out of the um, the the, uh, the modem connections and low speed connections phone so broadband doesn't necessarily would going is going to change the movement or to the trend but something that I think to, they are kind of worried about high speed internet is because they are afraid of people getting around these sensors or bypassing these filters by installing you know technical stuff, proxy servers and those kind of things. And I think the only way you could really be efficient in that is by using high-speed internet. Otherwise you would not be able to help others to bypass these, uh, these blocking and, and filtering. I have a suggestion and I've been working on that but because I'm not, I don't have a startup, I don't have access to, you know, to lots of businessmen and to, to, to suggest this. I think a P2P or peer-to-peer -peer RSS reader could be a very, very good solution and it could actually be the, the ultimate solution for censorship because it's using P2P which is quite an empowering technology and liberalizing technology and the RSS feeds that are making everything so simple. So if there is anybody out there who is interested in this idea, this could really be helpful for, for Iranians, Chinese and millions of other people. Uh, I went to Israel because I wanted to establish some sort of P2P or people-to-people -people here uh, connection between Iranian people and Israeli people to bypass the government's efforts to produce, to, to demonize and to evil, um, to, uh, to basically destroy the other side's image in terms of lots of, in terms of internal and, and, and inter international politics. So I think they are um, not seeing the reality, they're not showing the realities on, on, on their countries uh, or on the other side to their own people. So I think we have to, lots of us who are independent activists for peace and for, you know, uh, normalization of this of this uh, problem which has existed, which has been in Iran for a long time. We have to do something about it and I, th 
thought that by going there and blogging about it for Iranians and by using the media in Israel to get this message out that we, not all of us think like Ahmadinejad and there are much more nuances and, and um, complexities around Iran and don't believe what the media is telling you. So the, uh, the reaction was very good. I got so many interviews and, and uh, publicity in Israel, which was quite fascinating. I didn't get any in Iran, obviously, but I used my own blog to publish the videos that I had recorded and the pictures and the interviews and podcasts and writing, lots of writing I did. So I think it was the first, I believe that it was the first unedited, non-propaganda pictures or videos that anyone in Iran could see about Israel. Because no one has ever been to Israel publicly. No Iranian has publicly been, been to Israel and has reported on it. Yeah, and I was harassed and I have been warned not to try to come back or I would face prosecution. I can understand their point of view. I have broken some of the press law in Iran in my blog and they were not very happy about that by criticizing the supreme leader, the criticizing some, some crucial policies on the nuclear program and on Iran and Israel relationship and by uh, breaking some of the sacred relig religious traditions and, and ideas and all that kind of stuff. So the last time I was there, which was last summer, they stopped me at the airport. They didn't let me leave until I signed an apology on about these kind of things. And I can't go back now because I went to Israel after that. And going to Israel is illegal and I would be definitely prosecuted. I'm not sure how much, what is the sentence for these things altogether, but at least there would be at least a few years of jail. And I'm, I don't think it's going to worth it now to go back unless I can find some way to use my Canadian passport maybe or something like that. I think I am I'm really hopeful that Iran could manage to without being sanctioned or without being attacked it would manage to get some sort of security guarantee from the US and the EU that they have finally acknowledged this government there and they're not going to topple it or the alternative way, if they didn't get the security guarantee by that way, they, they got the security guarantee with producing weapons. I hope one of these two things happens, and then eventually we could see a much more open and democratic Iran, which would be a very crucial, peaceful, I mean, it would be, it would be a very crucial um, element in the whole region to be more peaceful, and then they would affect many other conflicts, especially including uh, Israel and Palestine. The, Iran has lots of influence there and they're not using it for the peace now because they have, they've got no reason for that. And Iraq and Afghanistan, everything would be much better if the US accepted and acknowledged Iran's security and sovereignty. Hm, geben wir die Frage doch einfach mal an unseren Spezialisten weiter. Hoy vamos a hablar de Internet y sus negocios, o dicho de otra manera, cómo generar ingresos y contactos calificados a través del universo online. Vielen Dank. Das, liebe Zuschauer, war es auch schon wieder für heute. Ich verabschiede mich und wünsche Ihnen eine inspirierte Woche. Bleiben Sie uns gewogen und schalten Sie auch das nächste Mal wieder ein. Bis dahin bleibe ich Ihr elektrischer Reporter. Handelsblatt. Substanz entscheidet. 
kommt mir keiner mit dem pseudophilosophischen Kaminfeuerspruch, dass Veränderung seit je die einzigste Konstante war. Es gibt wirklich quantitative Grade. 100 Jahre Mittelalter haben nur für Schildkröten Unterhaltungswert. Allein die 90er bieten genug für drei Schildkröteninfarkte. Diogenes hätte schon längst seine Tonne abgefackelt und würde hysterisch um Valium betteln. Lesen Sie das Handelsblatt vier Wochen zum Vorzugspreis und sparen Sie über 30%. Jetzt bestellen auf handelsblatt.com.